Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Three, two, one. Action! It's great to see everybody out there at Celebrating Act 2 audience land. Uh, welcome back. And we have with us today the virtual gourmet, John Mariani. Hi, John. Hello, hello. Hey, John, in a recent uh, article that you did for the virtual gourmet, you talked about a, uh, a New York restaurant going all vegan. Now, um, that's not a big deal to somebody like Art, who was a temporary vegan for a couple of years. But why is it such a big deal in New York and restaurant circles that a restaurant would go vegan? There are plenty of vegan restaurants around, aren't there? Yes, of course there are. Yeah, there are. There are a lot of vegetarian restaurants, there are a lot of vegan restaurants, and there is an enormous number of restaurants that now serve vegetarian menus within their regular menu. What was a shot and a shot across the bow <coughs> in this instance was that the restaurant is called 11 Madison Park. It has consistently had for years three Michelin stars, four stars from the New York Times. It has been a, a restaurant that is the most expensive restaurant in New York, meaning the country. It serves you an 11 to 15 course meal over four hours. And the wine list, I mean, you're not going to get it. It, it costs, I believe, <coughs> $335 for the food. And then when you put the bottles of wine on top of that, you're talking like seven, dollars $800 a person to eat here. And it was extremely popular with those people who just go for the curiosity factor, for visiting gourmands from Asia and, and Europe, um, and for the occasional uh, uh, fun fun guy, uh, what do they call them? Fun guys, what do they call them? <laughs> <laughs> fun guys, you know, celebrating they just closed a $20 million deal, so let's go there. This presupposed, of course, that everybody wanted to spend four hours eating 11 courses. So when they opened, it was a pretty, when they first opened, it was run by Danny Meyer and it was a pretty standard restaurant a la carte, so what American great food. Daniel Hum took it over. He was the chef at one point. He took it over and owned it with a partner and with investors. And they decided, wouldn't it be fun to have this 15 course menu and all of this? But also, why don't we have the captains go around and do card tricks at the table? Wouldn't that be amusing? Um, and that didn't last so long. So that was the first clue that they're into gimmicks at this place. Last time I went there, under duress, frankly, because I don't like 15-course meals, the seventh course in was they brought a basket and dumped clams onto a brown paper um, a tablecloth and had, this, this is our New England clam roast, um, which at that point in the meal struck me as an odd seventh course um, good as it was what do you what do you drink with that so this was what it was so COVID hits they shut down like everybody else so coming back online and maybe fearing that fine dining of the kind that he was doing would not be popular again he came up with this I think it's sheer gimmickry even if he's gone vegan um, that 11 Madison Park will be entirely vegan with two exceptions, um, honey, which is made by bees, animals, and cream for people's coffee, which is also comes from cows, which are animals, that he's allowing. But everything else will be vegetable. Uh, and it's going to be, again, 15 courses for $335. $335 for uh, peas and carrots and seitan instead of meat and so forth. All right. No matter how you feel about your own personal desire to eat that food, and I'm sure it's really going to be the best peas and carrots you ever had, I have no problem whatsoever with vegetarians as a, as a life choice. Um, vegans uh, impress me as having an agenda and a uh, more than a dislike for anybody who dares to not want to be a vegan and still wants cows farting up the climate and uh, chickens being slaughtered in unnatural ways and the, the hormones and so forth. Um, 
this I don't like nor care for. You want to be a vegetarian, you want to be a vegan, go right ahead. Just don't ram it down everybody else's throat, which Daniel Hum has done with his announcement that he says, I want everybody who comes into this restaurant to see what has been done to the planet and come along on this journey with me. Well, no thanks. So largely the reaction, because it hasn't started yet, it has not it's opening I think just this week, um, large the reaction has been, what? Uh, a lot of the reaction, uh, including mine, has been this is another gimmick. And uh, most people are wondering, are you going to be able to fill an 80-seat restaurant every night with enough people who want to eat 15 courses of vegetables, which are extremely hard to pair, by the way, with a $1,000 bottle of burgundy. There's nothing you can pair with artichokes. Artichokes just simply have a, a chemical in them that uh, defeats the whole purpose of drinking wine with them. And how many people, let's say a table, if you go for a table of six or four, how many people are going to invite their best client coming in from Cleveland whom you usually take to Mastro's Steakhouse or Peter Luger said, we got something special for you this time, Al. <laughs> We're going to fork our 15-course meal, and we won't have time to go to the, uh, the, um, uh, the penthouse club afterwards, uh, and we don't have time to go to Madison Square Garden first before we eat here because this is a four-hour meal. So I think at, <clears throat> at best it's, it's a risky proposition. Uh, at worst, I think it is forcing people to think about food in a negative way. And um, that's my take on 11 Madison Park. If I haven't eaten there, I'm telling you the food will probably be delicious. No, no. But I remember the great George Bernard Shaw, who was a vegetarian. He made his living writing and speaking, giving endless lectures and stuff. And he says the one place he never, ever would set foot would be a vegetarian meeting hall. He says, because the sound of a thousand people chewing on asparagus uh, would just would drive him crazy, and he couldn't bear it. I mean, he was a vegetarian. <laughs> well, I have to I have to tell you that um, uh, um, if perhaps a subject or not for another en entire episode, but uh, I tend to agree with you that the, the vegans have a uh, an agenda. Uh, vegetarians uh, and I've uh, I've straddled both, but. Uh, makes far more sense uh, to me. But if I'm going to spend $300, I'm going to go to Native Foods on uh, 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 20 different nights and get a really fine uh, meal uh, that's uh, vegan, if you will. They do a very good job. That's here on the West Coast. Uh, but in any event, I, I suspect that uh, even no matter how fresh their weeds are, uh, this restaurant is not going to make it in New York. There are, there is a restaurant in Paris which was a predecessor, a place, uh, Alan Fassade's restaurant called Arpege, and his was a tasting menu, um, and he became known for his vegetable dishes, which were delicious. He did a, like a candied tomato that was everybody was a signature dish. It's absolutely exquisite. But he also had fish and he also had meat. Well, he decided, some years ago, to do this. He was going to go all vegetarian. Uh, but he was going to have some cheese, and he was going to use some eggs and so forth. N not totally. But he found out very soon, why don't I offer the vegetarian menu right alongside a menu a lot of my other customers might want to eat, which is fish and meat and chicken, which he does. And to me, that's perfectly sensible, and is being done all over the United States, all over the world. Um, I ate at a vegetarian restaurant in India once, in the city of Jaipur. I was wearing this shirt, this is my Indian safari shirt, and uh, <laughs> vegetarian restaurant, but their idea of vegetarian was all vegetables and huge amounts of clarified butter and yogurt. I didn't eat again for 24, 36 hours. This is the richest food I've ever had in my life, and it was delicious. But boy, oh boy, I could not eat that all the time. So yeah, you want to you want to serve a menu with over here you got the the steak and over here you got the vegetables. Fine, I'm probably going to order from the other side of the menu a lot of the time. Usually by lunch. It does, hmm. it, it does seem that um, sometimes the politics gets in the way of good food. Well, right now we're seeing all sorts of things happening in the media that I think I don't want to say it's uh, oh yeah uh, um 
Epicurious says they will no longer have any beef dishes as recipe, beef recipes. Hmm. I mean, they're published by Condé Nast, and I think this is ridiculous too. Um, and some of the other magazines are shying away and doing more vegetable dishes, which I applaud very, very much so. Um, but at the same token, they have, the, the next article is why we should be eating bugs and fungi, and why we should be eating um, a, a, a well, what do you call it? The, you know, you know fu fungus and stuff that grows mold. Um, these are this is crazy stuff. Um, I know that there are people in New Guinea who lift up a rock or an old log and say, "Dinner," you know. Uh, <laughs> and I was in Mexico City once, in which all of the food was served at a place called El Chola. All of the food was served that was uh, pre-Columbian. I wasn't vegan, but because they didn't have, but they didn't have, they mm. didn't have, they didn't have cattle, they didn't have pork, they didn't have chicken, they didn't have anything. They had some dogs, and they had mountain lions. So they actually served mountain lion, monkey brains, and maggots. Um, Ooh, maggots! Oh, I said this. <laughs> I've had maggots for lunch. I'm not going to have them again tonight. But <laughs> the stupid thing was, I'm looking around the, the the dining room, and all the Mexicans in the room, not the stupid gringos. Uh, eating tacos, tortillas, and, you know, <laughs> carne and stuff. <laughs> so they were smart enough to say, okay, here's our gimmick. You're going to eat monkey brains for the crazy American tourists. Um, and uh, But the real Mexicans are having enchilates, suiza. Yeah. Well, I would imagine, John, that uh, like any industry, uh, there are some people who need to call it a gimmick, or I'll call it pushing the envelope. They need to experiment to the extreme just to get the attention, and that might be the case. Noma, which is uh, ranked in certain quarters as the greatest restaurant in the world, you know, I don't think it's open anymore. Um, well, they may have reopened. Um, they would do things and put out press release that we are serving live ants and justify, oh, no, they have a wonderful citrusy taste and they're full of protein and it's full of protein. You have to eat seven pounds of ants to get enough protein out of them. But, I mean, and they had the photographs and the video, and these idiots would go to the restaurant and have the ants and say to themselves, well, they're not so bad. you know. <laughs> so there are no ants on Noma's menu any longer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe we, at this point we could commit to not ever doing an entire episode on fungi, fungi fungus uh, meals, uh, nitrogen meals, uh, and uh, let's pick out something else that would be, uh, and monkey brains. Monkey brains. So it, it, can we now commit that we're never going to do an entire episode on that? It'll be a short episode. Or anything <laughs> with more than four legs. Ooh. Yeah. Well, we could start off with the episode with me looking like this. <laughs> and with that and with that pleasant uh, vision we thank you this time until next time John thanks a lot we'll Bye. see you soon for more on celebrating act 2 visit our webpage follow us on facebook subscribe to us on youtube and tell your friends celebrating act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life